So the next request I got was to make a Build-A-Bear machine. So we're actually going to do this as a separate object and then bring it into our model. Um, I don't have my model open right now, so let me at least get that model open. So I always like to open my files from this place, so don't double click on something um, in your Explorer and your desktop. Always open Revit first, then open your model. Um, and so I think this is desktop. Okay, so this is the model that I'm going to be placing my, um, my fluffer machine into, but first I need to make my fluffer machine. So I'm going to file, new, family, and I'm going to go to generic model and hit open. Okay, so here I'm going to use a series of reference planes um, to make my object. Why I do that is like these planes help it figure out where it is in space and it allows you to make something that can change sizes. So if I go to create, I'm going to click on reference plane. I'm going to draw one here. I'm going to draw another one here. I need to tell them how far away they are from my center point. So I'm going to go to um, and actually, let's use a little bit different. Let's put one over here. Let's put one over here. I want to preserve my center point. So this original center point I want to keep. Okay, so I'm going to space these lines so that they've built the bottom of my, of my fluffer machine. This is, um, oops, that is not the fluffer machine we're working on. The fluffer machine we're working on is this one here. So it kind of has this box in the bottom and it comes up to a cylinder and then there's this top hat thing on top with the bear. I'm not sure we're gonna make the bear. I think that's beyond the scope of this class. We can make the bottom. So if I, so over here, I'm going to go to Annotate, Aligned, and here I'm going to click between these two and click out, and then click between these two and then click out. Um, before I change those, I want to click this one, this one, this one, and then I want to click this one, this one, this one. So what I want to tell the computer is that um, these two lines seem to be equally spaced from the center. So I'm going to click on here and hit EQ, and that should have fixed that. And then over here, I'm going to click this and click EQ. Um, I now am going to make these both three feet. So I'm going to click um, on here. Actually, I'm not going to click on there. Sorry. I'm out of order here. All right, so I'm going to make a parameter that determines what the height, the width, and depth of this are. So if I go over here to family types, I'm going to hit this, click new parameter. I'm going to call this one width. And it should say length here. It's going to be a type parameter, and that's all good. And I'm going to type in the value here three feet. Now hit OK. So now when I click on this, I'm going to come over to labels and put on my width as three feet. Same thing over here. I'm going to click on here, come up to my label and click on my width as three feet. I now go to create extrusion. I'm going to make a box, click on the rectangle, click here, click there. I want you to lock all these little boxes by clicking on them and hit the check mark. So I made sure that I set the width and the, the two widths, the width and the depth of this, but I never actually set the height. So I'm going to look at it from the front to do that. So I'm going to go to my front view. Zooming over here, I need another reference plane and height. So I'm going to go to create reference plane, draw that in. And this one, um, I'm not going to make this parametric, so I'm just going to type in the values that I want it to be. So this, I want to be three feet up. Okay, and I want this to extend to the top of that. So I'm going to use the align tool. So this one right here is this button, or you can type in AL. Then you're going to click on the reference plane and then click on the thing you want to go to it and then lock it. So in 3D, we now have our bottom box. So next thing I need is the cylinder that's here. So we kind of have this glass cylinder and then the top hat. 
So to make my glass cylinder, I'm going to go to Create Extrusion. I'm going to use that midpoint. Um, sorry, I'm going to click on the circle over here, use that midpoint, and come out one foot four inches. And then I'm going to offset it using this offset tool, one half inch for the glass. Bring it to the inside, hit the check mark. I'm going to go back to my front view. So this is all the way down here. I want the bottom of my glass to be kind of at the top of this form. So I'm going to do AL, get the bottom of that. Um, let's see how tall we think that piece is. If I'm saying that this is three feet, which I think is a little bit big, it's probably less than that. Um, let's say that's three and a half. So I'm going to, I can actually copy reference plane. So I'm going to copy this. And as I'm copying, I'm going to type in three feet, the so three apostrophe, six inches, six um, with the quotation marks and hit enter. And if I were to dimension that, I'd see that that gets me to my three six. Okay, I'm going to do another align so you can use this tool or type in AL, click on this line, click on this line, lock. All right, so let's see where we're at. Okay, so we have a start, we have our um, base and we have our, our glass. So our glass right now is not um, any material, right? So we're going to fix that at the end. Let's just add our top hat for now. So I'm going to go back to um, top view. So I can go to my ref level, create extrusion. Um, and this time I'm going to pick this outside. So I'm going to use my pick tool, pick those. And I'm going to offset it four inches. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of my interior line and hit the check mark. Let's look back in front view. This is my little top hat, so I'm just going to bring it um, AL, line the bottom of it to here, and then let's say this whole thing um, maybe comes up, I don't know, two inches, four inches. Let's say that's four inches, and that's like another three. So I'm going to copy this up four inches. And then I'm going to copy it up another, actually, I bet it's another four. I'm going to copy up another four inches. So I have my two height references. I'm going to do AL, so annotate. Um, I'm sorry, I must be under modify. Modify, align here to here, lock it. And then we're going to create one more, the top or our top hat. So I'm going to go over to here, create extrusion. And I'm just using my circle tool again. I'm going to come out one foot. Hit check mark, go to my front view, and then I'm going to bring this up to here, this up to there, and then do an AL, align the top to that and the bottom to that. Did I get that wrong? Align the AL, the bottom to ta ta that. All right. So now if I look in 3D, I have um, the basic form of this. The next thing I'm going to do is change the materials on here so that it looks a little bit more accurate and you can tell what's glass. So to do that, um, I'm going to come over to here and on my properties panel, you'll see that I have graphics and I have material. I'm going to click on by category, little dots next to it, and I'm going to click on glass and then hit OK. Um, and that's it. That'll do it. Um, if you want to see this in, and I guess we also have this as like a bright blue, right? We can make that. So if I click on here, I'm going to come back over to buy category, click on it. Um, and I'm going to take default and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to call this blue. Blue plastic. Okay. So blue plastic. Um, in appearance, it's important, make sure you hit this little like replace key. I'm oh, sorry, not replace key, this little new key. That's going to keep you from modifying another material by accident, it's a weird thing. So over here, I'm gonna change the color to that bright blue. Um, and that is all I'm going to do. And I'm going to hit okay. So now I'm going to select this for my material and make sure it says blue plastic, this one and this. If you hold control and click, you can select two things at once. I'm going to change that to blue plastic, hit OK. And now if I come down here to this little bar where my view options are, I can click on here and go to realistic. And now it's starting to look a lot more like my fluffle machine. Um, so I can keep building on this and adding detail, but I think this is a good enough representation for my plans and my elevations. 
So I'm going to save this. Um, I'm going to call it fluffer, fluff machine. And then I'm going to load it into my project and close. When I do that, you can see that it's here to place. I want to go into my level one floor plan and I'm going to go back to component. It should still be up here. If it's not, you can always double click down on here and find it that way. So you click on here and there it is. 